electron beams. And this is currently the world record. And so this is just a peak simulation modeling the interaction. This is the laser pulse going through the plasma. It's exciting positive laser. And some electrons are being accelerated. Okay. So going down, and this is going down in density, going to higher energy. All right, so let's go back to this Livingston plot. Uh, and we can put the laser plasma accelerator experiments on this Livingston plot. Here is this most recent result, 2019, of HGV, 4 GV. And you can see it's a very nice trend. We're getting about um, a factor of 10 increase in energy um, over about six years. So it's actually doing a little bit better than, uh, than Livingston's original prediction. And so what, what happened, of course, where were the critical developments? The CPA laser technology, which I talked about, which came online in the 90s. And then some understanding of the laser plasma interactions and allowed us um, to achieve these results. And I should say the laser technology is, is not saturated in any way, and we expect these, this to continue. So uh, the one challenge, of course, if you want to go to higher and higher energy, uh, eventually you have to stage. So what does that mean? So I showed you there was some characteristic length scale for the laser energy to deplete into the plasma. Right, it's losing energy. And so once that, once that laser energy is done, then you have to put it into a second plasma acceleration, plasma accelerator with a fresh laser and accelerate further. So if you really want to go to high energies, you have to do this stage, this stage idea. So with multiple uh, uh, laser plasma accelerators, and if you're dreaming of sort of these collider scale energies, TEV energies, you're going to need uh, hundreds of these little laser plasma accelerators stringed together. So we've been researching how to do this, and we've done some initial proof of principles about staging these accelerators. And this is uh, an experiment we did in 2016. So the basic idea here is we have a laser pulse come in and hit this gas jet, ionize, and create a beam. And here's a fairly stable beam over 1,000 shots. So this is the energy stable stability and charge stability. And that's important uh, to have a very stable beam. And then what you need to do is you need to take that beam and you need to put it into a second stage to be accelerated further. So the beam is sort of diverging out of here. So you need to capture it and then focus it into the second stage. And so we actually use a plasma device to do this. And the, the way this works is, um, again, we, it's similar to this capillary discharge. So we, we strike a current through this, uh, this, this capillary. And the current uh, produces an azimuthal B field, which then focuses the electrons. And so this is a plasma lens technology here. And you can actually get uh, focusing fields of about 1,000 tesla per meter, which is an order of magnitude larger than conventional focusing structures. And so that allows this whole system to be very, very compact. And then we come in, uh, so we focus the EV onto our second stage. And we come in with our second laser pulse to further accelerate it. And we actually uh, use a, a plasma mirror. So this is a, a tape drive. And this laser pulse comes in, and it ionizes the surface of this tape. It creates an overdense plasma, which reflects the laser pulse. And if you time it correctly, you can put it into a phase that's accelerating the speed. And we actually use a VHS tape to do this. Because there's a lot of VHS tape lying around, and no one needs it anymore. <laughs> so, uh, so this is in the focusing of this plasma lens. You can take your diverging beam and focus it down to a nice spot. This is showing the reflective mode of in this plasma here. And over here, you see uh, the result after the first and second stage. And depending on the timing, where you stick the beam in those plasma buckets, in, in the plasma wave, you can either accelerate or decelerate the beam. And so here's an example of uh, a timing that accelerates, decelerates, accelerates, and decelerates. So that was sort of our first proof of principle uh, staging experiment. But we want to, this is really done at the um, 100, sort of 100 MeV level. We're going from uh, about whatever this is, 75 MeV to up to maybe 200 MeV. So we'd like to repeat this at the 
GeV level. And so right now we have plans to do that. And um, of course what you need is two independent laser arms uh, with independent compressors. So we currently have a, a project going on in the lab to add a second compressor, so here was the original one, a second compressor on our second beam line so that the original beam line could uh, accelerate the electron beam and then a second laser pulse could post accelerate it and demonstrate this staging at, uh, at the GED level. And of course we're splitting our, 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 our main pulse into two, so our main pulse is about 40 joules, so this is a case where we're splitting it into 15 and 15 joules, and then you have your first accelerator produce a beam, uh, and then you refocus it again with this uh, plasma lens, and then you come in with your second accelerator and you post accelerate it. So you get five jev about in the first accelerator, and then close to 10 jev in the second accelerator, and here's the, the, the distribution. So that's what we're, we're uh, working on right now. Uh, and this, this second beam line should be done uh, about a year from now. Okay. So of course, um, you know, there's many applications of beams. And um, you know, not all, every application needs very high energy. You know, I, in the beginning of this talk, I showed you some FEL facilities that were using beams of order you know, 4, 8 GB, which we've always already achieved with a single stage. So we have a couple of smaller projects going on that are looking at, looking at applications of these laser plasma accelerators. So this is, um, this is again, our main laser facility uh, for electron acceleration, and then we've got the second beam line in development. We also have two smaller laser systems. We have this uh, undulator line. So this is a 100 terawatt system uh, that's being used to develop a free electron laser based on this laser plasma accelerator. And we also have another, it's almost identical, 100 terawatt laser system um, uh, here. This is building 71 up on the hill. And this system is uh, actually has two separate arms and it's used for uh, Thompson scattering production of uh, MEV photons. Um, and this is funded by uh, DNA. Okay, so the laser plasma accelerator driven FDL. This is the line, just to give you an idea of how it works. So, so we have some uh, gas jets, a triggered injection mechanism. Again, we're using this active plasma lens to focus the beam. And the trick here is that to really make this FDL instability lays, you need to redistribute your phase space of your electron beam. So our electron beams are extremely short, and they also have a relatively large uh, momentum spread. And so the idea here is to use a chicane to really stretch your beam. So what a chicane does is a series of magnets and that bend the beam, and the higher energy electrons take short paths and the lower energy electrons take long paths. So this sort of stretches out your beam. So the, the high energy guys are ahead and the low energy guys are behind. So why is this useful? This reduces the energy spread in a single slice and that's what matters for this FDL interactor. So here is a relatively large energy spread and now we have a relatively short slice energy spread and if you do this right, you can optimize it. You are losing a little bit peak current, but for the FEL interaction, uh, the energy spread is, is, is a, a larger effect than reducing the peak current. So it's a net win. Uh, and then you can have this device laid. So that's the approach that's ongoing now, and there's some pictures from that, that, uh, that 100 terawatt we call it. 100 HTU, 100 terawatt undulator line, and this is a project led by Jeroen Van Tilburg in the Villa Center. Uh, here is the laser focused into this little chamber right here. There's an LPA, and then there's this plasma lens to capture and focus the beam. We have this chicane to stretch it, and a pair of uh, triplets to focus the beam on the entrance of this undulator. And we have installed this, it's called a Visa undulator, uh, it's about a two centimeter period much later than we have diagnosis at the end. And so this right now is um, working on a proof of principle demonstration. A 
this sort of beam phase space manipulation to just have it laid, but it's, it's ultimate goal is to produce a soft x-ray, sort of like a 30, 30 nanometer level. Okay, and so our other radiation source uh, development project is this uh, laser plasma driven compact MED photon source. So here we use a Thompson scattering. So this is two uh, dual sort of two independent arms, dual arms. Once the one one arm of the laser pulse generates the electron beam, and the and then a second arm uh, is the scattering laser. And with a few hundred MeV uh, electrons, you can generate sort of uh, one to nine MeV photons, um, and then you can use that to. Uh, Characterized material. Um, actually, in this case, what would be nice is also to have a, a staging setup. So, what this project is really after is something really compact and portable gamma ray source, sort of in that one to nine MeV range. And so, sort of to reduce the shielding crime and to make it really portable, you can imagine having a second uh, plasma accelerator stage decelerate the beam after the scattering. So, you have one stage accelerate scatter in between and then you have a second stage decelerate and then that greatly reduces the, the shielding requirements. Okay, so I quickly want to mention that we have this, um, you can also accelerate ion with laser plasma interactions. And you do this by interacting an intense laser on a, on a, solid, on a solid target. And what happens here uh, is you, you generate hot electrons and they escape the target and they form a sheath. And then this, this field, the sheath field, then accelerates all ions off the surface of, of this solid target. Um, and we've done these experiments um, at, at the Bellow Center. Here's, some, here's showing us basically intensity versus maximum proton energy. This is a whole bunch of experiments. Uh, right now, we are at sort of this 10 to the 18, 10 to the 19 watt per centimeter watts per centimeter squared region for our laser pulse and then so we sort of expect sort of 1 to 10 MeV uh, protons and that's indeed what, what we were measuring. Here's a spectrum energy uh, and uh, here's protons and you get uh, sort of 1 to 10 MeV um, and here we're using a 5 micron foil to do this. So what we want to do is to increase the intensity by having a short focal length and move up sort of into the 100 MeV Proton regime. So we also have a project uh, to do this as well. So I already told you about the second beam line project with two independent compressors. At the same time, we're upgrading Bella to do this. Our facility. We're also adding a second interaction point called IP2, and this will be a short focal length. So get us up to about 10 to 21 watts per centimeter squared. And so that's here, and then that'll get us up sort of at the 100 MeV protons. So this is an initiative by DOE uh, Fusion Energy Sciences, and uh, this should be completed again uh, about a year from now. Um, as part of this upgrade, we are part of this LaserNet US. I just want to throw this up here. This is it was my last slide here. Uh, so that if you if you're interested in using our facility, well, our facility, um, this is a mechanism to apply for time through DOE FES, and it's mainly focused on uh, high energy density laboratory plasma physics. Uh, all applications are interconnected. So I'll just skip right to the summary. So I told you uh, some of uh, the activities going on in the Bellis Center, so that's the Berkeley Lab Laser Accelerator. Uh, I showed you some MEV, you can generate on a regular basis sort of multi-GEV laser plasma accelerated electrons using these petawatt lasers. So I showed you 4 GV beams over 9 centimeters and using some, uh, you know, some advanced targetry we were able to guide the pulse and go up to 8 GV in 20 centimeters. And this is sort of state of the art, that's, that's the world record. Uh, we're moving towards staging these accelerators together. We've demonstrated at 100 MeV and we're working towards multi GV staging. I told you about some uh, radiation source applications. We have a program to do a LPA-driven soft X-ray FDL and also a, uh, a compact MEV photon source based on top of scattering. 
And uh, we're just starting to get into laser ion acceleration, and we're developing a new uh, short focal length beam line, uh, which should give us the uh, sufficient densities to move up in, in iron energy. So I'll just uh, conclude there. I want to thank uh, my colleagues at the, 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 the Bella Center, and these are the folks who are working on these topics. I'm happy to answer your questions. I worry about the staging in that you have fairly big energy spread and angle problems. And then when you start staging, I would think that the random walk of additional stages may get you in trouble. Have you studied that? Yeah, that is a big issue. And the more monoenergetic you can make it, of course, the better. Uh, so, um, so the, ener the initial energy spread is due to the ejection physics. So if you go to a higher energy in a single stage, the relative energy spread goes down. And that's shown here. This is the energy spread after that first stage. It, you know, there's some fluctuations, but it's, it's going down here. We expect 2% out of here. Um, and that's a lot easier to do than, if you remember, I showed this picture this very large energy spread right here. So this is tens of percent. So this will be a lot easier at 2%. And then we've studied, of course, uh, the full propagation start to end. And this is timing, delays in timing. And you can see there is some fluctuations in the bunch energy. But this is two stage. And like you imagine, if you're doing n stages, it's much more common. Yeah. yeah, well, especially if you have something like a medical physics application, you don't want yeah. to be 50 times higher than the other. Yeah, um, yeah. that's right. Uh, so hopefully medical physics applications won't need the very high energies, probably won't need the staging uh, per se, but... Um, you still may need a priest, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be the first uh, person talking about that. <laughs> but this is, you know... <laughs> Basic R&D on advanced accelerator concepts at this point. So the applications are still a bit out, out in the future, for sure. Maybe relatedly, you talked about the network of user facilities. What kinds of users do you get? So this is a very recent development. So we had our first users this this past year. Or so the first first beam time was in 2019. So we had. Um, we had an experiment to do, uh, to, so there, the, to generate X-rays and then do sort of um, uh, sort of backlighting a, a solid target. Uh, so you pump it, and then you could use the laser plasma accelerator to generate X-rays or beta quantum emission, then we probe it. So we actually got two experiments this past year. Um, that was one, and the other one was on a. Um, a liquid film target. So I said, you know, these these accelerators operate at you know, one to ten hertz. Uh, so if you're using a, a fixed solid target, you can imagine, you know, some wheel or aspirator. You can imagine a tape. What would be even better is a renewable liquid target. And so this was a plasma mirror concept based on a liquid film. So, so we were testing uh, how well that worked, the reflectivity and the contrast. So that was the two experiments from last year, but yeah, I don't know, 2020, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get more of this year. It depends what people propose. So you're a theorist. What are you doing specifically in this, and what's exciting? Ah, uh, yeah. So I'm a theorist, right, and uh, so this sort of concept of being face, face manipulation is sort of the things I'm thinking about. This is one idea. Uh, there's other ideas to do this. Um, you can use beam conditioning, it's another concept. You can do this. You can use a transverse gradient undulator. So my background is laser plasma action, but also FEL physics. So I'm really excited about this application. And I'm thinking about clever ways to manipulate the beam to make it work. Because the 60 phase space brightness of these beams is, is excellent. It's just not well distributed necessarily for the FEL application. There's a lot of different ways you can redistribute the beam to make it work. Um, and so the other thing I'm mainly focused in is thinking about you know, this 
basic laser plasma interaction. You know, so what are what is what is the physics of these nonlinear laser pulse propagation in the plasma? So we study this closely so we can control it and improve the absorption. Did you get a chance to study the latest Office of Science report on compact accelerator applications? It came out Friday. Uh, the one on Friday, but I know the, I didn't read that, but I know the workshop yes. that took place in DC that, uh, yeah, last spring. Yeah, I was on it. Okay, so okay. We, so we came up with a report with a big wish list. Yeah. I'd like to start taking them on and see if they can break and go with that. Yeah. So, what's the beauty of plasma accelerator? So, if there's a need for compactness, okay. yeah, plasma accelerators are, are the way to go. You know, How portability, can compactness. Can how can you make it like this big? And then I want to explore the geology. Can you do that? The geology. Yes. Yeah. So you can definitely make them portable. Uh, I don't have a picture, but sort of okay. You know, you this is spread out, but you could actually make this whole laser system about a meter by a meter. Okay. Whole meter by a whole meter. And the active accelerating region is only a few centimeters. So you can really make these extremely compact. You can put them on a truck and wheel them around if you want to. And you know, yeah, if compactness is the issue, then, then this technology is really going to work for you because it's got three orders of magnitude on the accelerating gradient compared to a dimensional structure. So I think it has the role of, inter ah, of interrupting such a fantastic conversation, but we ran out of time.